Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. We told you earlier about the story of Festus Kayamo and his petition to the CCB. Uh, what was the petition against Atiku Abubakar? But now there are other stories coming from the PDP. Now the party has reversed its suspension of former governor of Ikiti State, Ayodele Fafayoshe, and former Senate President Pius Aim, and other chieftains like uh, the former Senate uh, President Aim Pius Aim and former Governor Sherma. Uh, also, though the other people who are included in these uh, reverser, uh, uh, Dennis uh, Etava and Aslam Aliyu, the PDP National Publicity Secretary, Debo Olugwagba, in a statement earlier today said, the party's National Working Committee reversed the referral, uh, referral of the Governor of Benue State, Samuel Autumn, to the National Disciplinary Committee, and this is part of the decision the party had made the party had a week ago suspended the party stalwarts over anti-party activities. Meanwhile, the State Working Committee of the PDP in Benue State has suspended the Kachi Philip led Igorov Council Ward Executive in Boko local government area. Uh, to nip the crisis that led to the suspension of the, uh, the national chairman, Iocha Ayu, in the belt. The acting state chairman of the party, Isaac Humfo, at a press briefing in Malkodi says, the Igorov Council Ward Executive is suspended for one month to allow for peace to be restored. The State Working Committee deliberated on and reviewed the recent activities and matters of the administration of the affairs of the party in Igoro Council Ward, which have raised and aggravated tensions within the party in the area with possible threats of violence and breakdown of law and order. It is therefore the resolution of the State Working Committee that quotient to the powers conferred on it by section 59, subsection 4 of the Constitution of the People's Democratic Party as amended in 2017, and thus order as follows. One, that the Executive Committee of the PDP in Nigeru Council Ward is hereby suspended for a period of one month pending necessary action which shall be taken to restore sanity, harmony, law and order in the party in that area. Let, we'll put perspectives into all of this issue plus the uh, first story and headline story that we reported about Professor Skyamo's petition to the CCB. Now he has been invited to come and help out in the investigation, which we understand that the CCB might soon be uh, commencing investigation into the allegation of using uh, the use of SPVs by Atiku Abubakar to siphon money when he was vice president. I'm being joined tonight by uh, a member of uh, the People's Democratic Party and a spokesperson to the PDP Presidential Campaign Council, Mr. Shagun Shawumi, thank you so much indeed for coming tonight. So, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. What is going on in your party? It seems to be like a lot is happening. And first of all, we saw the suspension of the national chairman. We saw the suspension of the likes of Ayodele Fayoshe, Pius Aim, Governor Shema, and the rest. But we've seen the reverse. Uh, there are those who are saying that the suspension of the chairman also, there is a problem. And there are a lot of ripples on this. Is the party bleeding internally? Sure. You know, the difference between the PDP and our friends, the rivals APC, is that as a habit, we really strive to obey court orders. Even when the others are offensive and they have far-reaching consequences on us, we always try to obey it. I'll come back to just opposing later. And when we take a decision and there's an outcry that says that, no, you can't go this way, you can't go this way, what makes you know that we're a democratic party is that we have the uncanny and unusual ability to call ourselves back. The suspensions of the Fayoshe and Co. didn't go down well with a lot of party members. Why? Because we felt after an election that we're challenging in courts, we shouldn't be seen 
to be injuring ourselves or you know casting blames especially when we have not done a comprehensive review of that election therefore we felt that oh it may seem like victimization especially when we know where these entrenched interests are and we cried out and thankfully and luckily our nwc they took a second review of the matter and they have you know stepped aside that suspension you can see what's going on in benway state too the the people who for whatever reasons did what they did you can see some action democracy is not pretty it's a very heavy contestation ideas mood inflections attitude humans behavior characteristics but one thing is certain democracy strive when we obey the rule of law take a look at your friends on the other side I can count four instances where you see that. Where are the, where are the, where are the APC. friends? Are? So when you say your friends, are, no, I, 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 to, I know you wanted me to say APC, but okay. No, yeah. no, no, because I mean, when you say let's, your let's, friends, so I wanted I, you to put it in perspective. Yeah, that it's the APC. I, I don't have any friends. I know you don't. Uh -huh, I yeah. know you don't. So, so know, do you have like, enemies? No, I don't okay. have enemies, but in this sense, you are neutral. Every I see everybody as Nigerians. No, I like you that. politicians, you know your ways. No, no, we are Nigerians so too. So say but your friends. Don't waste my time on this thing. My friends, the APC. Continue, please. Let's say my friends i can give you four instances where they really let people down in terms of how they obey or choose not to obey court orders let me start from the one with the cbn look at how long and how far it took them just to obey the lawful order of a court check one look at the fellow that is in the fcc with due respect to him i'm aware that he has what you have, what, you, what, you, what, what this, this contempt of court judgment on his head. And what is he doing? He's not vacating. He's not purging himself of contempt. He's going around in the country as though he is now the law unto himself. Let's proceed in those type of order. Now look at what they've done today. They're in charge of all their practical government, including DSS, by virtue of the fact that it's part of the commander-in-chief responsibility of their president and the party. They have come to say, oh, red herring, we hear some people are trying to truncate this and truncate that. Now, I ask you, who the hell is the DSS talking to? Is it Sheung or me or any other Joe out there that's supposed to help them find out who those persons are, why they've not been arrested, why they've not been profiled, and why anybody will be coming to public space with such a very, very important and very, very serious comment from one of the biggest, most respected intelligence organizations in the world, because I think ADSS is good. This, you see, when you ask me what's going on with the PDP, I take you to town so you can see that we are struggling to be Democrats. We are acting like Democrats. We behave like Democrats. This 2023 election has come now. As far as we are concerned, it's not over because we still have to go to court and we have started the process. Some of our friends are naturally young people. They want to ventilate and they know greed and all of that. They're on the street. Have you seen any of our leaders from the PDP make any incisive comment? Make any comment that will suggest that we want to torpedo the country? It's very hard being Democrats. It's when you feel cheated. Flip it back to, our, to my friends, the APC. It's not unlike them to say baboon will be bled. It's not unlike them to start to, you know, do like player hitting and, you know, gaslighting a whole race. Look, we are not a people who can hold ourselves responsible for what we consider to be infractions that we think rest squarely with INEC and all other organs that have some responsibility to prevent certain things from happening. But shall we not even be allowed in a free democratic environment to say we are protesting. And if this DSS shenanigan is the attempt at saying people will not protest, but hello, we will protest if we have a need to protest. We will go to court. We will be within the rules. We will obey all lawful orders, but we will not allow anybody, no matter how highly pleased, to, re to take from us our fundamental human right as guaranteed by the Geneva Convention of protest. And anything other than that doesn't make sense. In terms of the PDP, but, we are not bleeding. Okay. So we have been around since 1999. Absolutely. Because I like to direct you back to my question because mm -hmm. uh, you've gone off the trajectory of my first question. Yes, I did. Which is the fact that uh, the question is, 
is your party bleeding? Because I just told what, you we're not. What, what would you describe? How do you, do you describe what is going on in your party? If, and you just finished an election, and now you're saying they, you're, you're, there's no chairman. You, you don't have a national chairman, as you speak. Sure, you I only told, have an acting sure, national I told, chairman. I, I went to town to show you how we try to obey court orders. It's a legitimate order of court that told him not to parade himself. I'm talking it, about it, a political yes, situation I'm, in your party. I'm not talking I'm about. I'm telling you what the made the national chairman of, step aside. You're missing the point, Sheung. I'm not. I'm asking you the a question. The point I'm making to you, I mean, listen, I, Sheung. And I'd like you to explain to Nigerians just for a moment. Okay. You went into an election. Yeah. And I'd like you to unravel because you are on the inside. And I mean, uh, as a very good person that I know very well, mm. you are the one that doesn't lie and I've not caught, caught you doing that. Mm. I'd like you to be able to tell Nigerians the truth. Mm. You what? are coming out of an election yes. and you're seeing all of this playing out within your party. Doesn't it cause for a, a concern, especially for your supporters who voted for your party to Good. say, this was a party they supported and see what is going on. So listen, we went to an election and the result is still being contested. The NWC of our party suspended some key players in our party. We, the party members, some of us cried, no, this is not the time for so this. So you think that well, that step was the wrong one? We, we didn't agree with it. They reversed. Was it a wrong one? It was, we didn't agree. Listen. When you are profiling people for anti-party activities, it may not necessarily be wrong or right. We just didn't agree that that's not the thing now. That's not where we are now. What have they done? They reversed. A court said, our national chairman, Yoshia, you must not parade himself. What has he done? He stepped aside. Now, what I'm trying to show you is that I'm trying to show the Nigerians that democracy is not pretty. Some of these things do happen. And that was why I juxtaposed it to the APC that has a peculiar unwilling ability to obey the law. It doesn't even matter if there's a judgment. In the Bauer case, I followed it because social, civil society have been talking about it for some time. I've heard science talk about it. There is a contempt of court that says they want to commit him to prison. It's a judgment. So does that refer to the APC and what we are, the government in power? Can the party that produced a government be totally different from that government? Members of the fourth realm, stop treating these people with kids' gloves. I'm asking you a question. I'm answering you absolutely. They cannot divulge themselves from the shenanigans of the government. They battered. Who is going to be responsible for people not obeying the law? How do you it? describe that scenario? I've described it for you that, look, we, have, we are coming to a dangerous next phase in our democracy. You know that what that phase is? It's the face of do whatever you like. It doesn't matter how brazen. It doesn't matter how offensive. It doesn't matter the physical evidence that people can see that is immoral. All they have to say is go to the court. And there's a way they spin that go to the court. You almost get the impression they're saying go to the court because they have some understanding that justice cannot be done. I don't agree with them, though. I feel that the Nigerian judiciary still has the capacity and the capability to examine cases and rule. And now, back to the Bauer case. A court of competent jurisdiction said, oh, Mr. Bauer, contempt of court, we gonna commit you to prison. They have already ruled. What I expect him to do, what I expect his government to do, what I expect his attorney general to do, with due respect to them, is to say, Bauer, put yourself on contempt or go to prison. These things are not open to you. Look, because the, I've, I've asked Mr. Bauer about this. And what did he say? And uh, he said that he has not seen the court. Just for a moment, he, he has said that there are those, there are the pro Bauer and there are the anti Bauer, and perhaps his actions and the performance in office is what is causing that. I am as pro Nigeria as pro Nigeria can be. I am so pro Bauer, Bauer will not even believe it. I was pro MFLA. I was MFLA would believe it. He didn't ask me to be pro him. I've always been pro, what is the best for us? What I'm saying to you, Shenwa, I wish it wasn't Bauer. I wish I could use another example. We will torpedo our country if we give the impression that we will not obey lawful orders of court. It's as simple as ABC. And PDP obeyed that order on the IU matter. 
compare us with our friends. All right. Let me take you to um, the lesson because now we're looking at your party. Whatever happened to the Equera Madu report, mm -hmm. uh, in the post-2019, there was a, mm -hmm. a similar report I'm in the post-2015. Yes. There was another one in the post-2019. Yeah. For those who have been watching activities in your party, mm -hmm. will be wondering, do you guys just put up this report for putting, I mean, for, for the sake of it, but for not really thinking about utilizing the lessons and the advice that are embedded in those reports? Report. What has become of those kind of lessons that have been drawn from these scenarios? Our actions in 2023 is consistent with both the Kerimadu and the Bala report. And I'll tell you what the report says in the real sense of the play. The Kerimadu report said, look, you guys, we can't be doing every four, four years zoning. Keep it for eight years because if somebody wins the first time, he may be naturally entitled constitutionally. You can't be asking to come and discuss zoning. That was what the Kerimadu said. The Bala report came and said, well, we are in a CAT 22 situation in 2023, therefore, throw it open. So that we don't fall foul of a Kerimadu report, but we also are sensitive to the yearnings of the people in the country. How did we go wrong? Chair, do you know the funny thing about democracy? The funny thing about democracy is that you may bring everybody into a pool, and we may see, oh, we may think this is the best man for that particular responsibility. And five minutes after, you tell people to go and cast their vote, and you'll be shocked. Because Sheung, if the Nigerians are not even shocked that APC can still have the temerity to win an election in this country, when we were using Naira to buy Naira, we didn't have fuel for forever we were queuing. We had the longest strike for like eight months. We have the greater poverty that is crazy. The whole thing is not working. And you would democracy. They may have, you know, touches up here and there. That's what the court to decide. But the fact remains that some people still vote for them. So the the, the the not so you know textbook definition of democracy is that the people will still have to vote. But the question is that the I mean I remember Ucha Secundus after losing out the election, he, he, he literally was prostrating to Nigerians, you know, begging Nigerians that please forgive us. We failed Nigerians and we want to have a new start. In fact, there are those who are campaigning that PDP needs a rebirth, PDP needs to be uh, refreshed, PDP needs some kind of rejigging and all of that. But I mean, I don't know if there was a fix, an actual fix of your party going into the 2023 election. Could this be one of the reasons, or how would you r describe what led to the loss of your party in the 2023 election? I'll say that the 2023 election was an unusual election. In, tw in 2019, we felt and we really strongly believed we were robbed. But in 2023, I like to say we gave it out by ourselves. I mean, you can map where the areas where we didn't get our traditional numbers. Now, you can just see PDP is responsible for not getting it here. PDP is responsible here. PDP is responsible. PDP is responsible in you know, So we, we, our, our struggle, or if you like, this, their struggle, because I ain't involved in that, their struggle for control and, you know, trying to show that we're this, we're that, created a scenario where they were trying to settle score with a general election. It was an on -go for your party. It was, no, it was a... Terrible on go for our party. You know why? You can see the mood in the country. Anybody can sponsor people to come and start saying we support you, we support you. The fact remains that it is against logic that a party that almost just before an election had suffered the Nigeria the highest level of suffering they've ever known since the Civil War. You were using Naira to buy Naira. How do you explain that they can win, if not an own goal? And a lot of things that we're hoping that the court would throw. And uh, that leads me to asking you your reaction to the DSS, and perhaps not in the realm of the DSS, mm -hmm. but in the items that have been drawn by the DSS on the intentions of those who want a state of emergency, mm -hmm. those who want an interim government in mm -hmm. this country, and those who they say, according to the DSS uh, uh, statement, that they are orchestrating all of this to cause unrest in the country. What would be in the mind of these kind of people? First is first. One of the reasons why you have organizations like DSS, FBI, KGB, and all of those things all over the MI5, and so on and so forth in the world is to be the first level of filter to track information and, and nip them in the board. Part of nipping it in the board is that they are to profile where these things are coming from. If there is justiciable and concrete evidence, 
they go and try. How can the people that could do Gestapo against judges come and start doing press conferences at this risk of so-called destabilization of the country? You see, the, so you don't believe that. You no, know, I believe that. Exist. I believe that. I believe that the APC government is the greatest disappointment that has happened in this country. They have even the mystique of government power has been lost. Normally, if anybody was planning those kinds of things, what you'll be hearing is that they've picked them up, they've arrested them, they are writing statements and all of that. They're not doing press conferences and press releases. That their press release can have two potential interpretations. One, it can make people very scared, potential investors, those coming into the country, thinking that the country is going to implode, which I don't think so. The second is that it may be their clever idea of starting a Gestapo against opposition. But I would just advise, 12 states were given to APC, Balatinubu, allocated to him. 12 states what were... What do you mean by allocated? I'm coming. Because we're in court with him. We're challenging his victory. Mm -hmm. 12 states were allocated to him. 12 states were won by PDP. 11 states was FCT was won by Labour and Peter Obi. That means you have an Igbo man in Peter Obi, a House of Lani man in Atiku, a Yoruba in Balatinubu, practically dividing the country into three. When you see that, if you are a classical person who understands catastrophic hypotheses, you're going to say, hey, we need to cool down now. We need to start, like, you know, bringing everybody together so that you don't win a Parag victory. The military was in charge of this country and people did civil disobedience until they had to go. If it is easy for people to do civil disobedience to force the military out, then tell me how easy do you think it is to do civil disobedience to force civilian government into trouble? That that's not a, a conversation for. I know it's not a conversation. I'm just trying to tell you that we, you we, must. We shouldn't be painting that. No, picture. no, no, no. Analysis. Because of, if you said that the nation is at a fragile state, then we then should I, not be painting. We should not be no, tilting no, no. towards. I gave that. you a scenario that will make all of the players understand that it's just an election. Someone can win, someone can lose, the country continues. And that the activities, action, rhetorics of all persons will help us to heal. And in that healing process, let's not be looking for how we're just going to start, you know, making people feel uncomfortable, making them feel that the country is no longer welcoming for them. And for those who are probably under the guise of opposition, thinking that anybody in this country is interested in their shenanigans and trying to implode the country, they have another day coming. That's why I called out the days and said, no, that's not the approach. You have won them now. The next thing we want to see, their names, when, where, how. If you need them to profile them for further investigation, do so that. So you're asking that the DSS should go after these people and arrest them? Absolutely. She so just don't go and trump up charges to injure your opponents. If, it, if there is any concrete evidence, if you tell somebody, he has to prove, he has to explain himself. If you have evidence he's doing, he has, do you think that a nation like Nigeria, your Nigeria, my Nigeria, our Nigeria, is actually going to be willing to destroy our country because of somebody lost an election or won an election? No, we're not. Democracy is a journey. I know all the issues around the 2023 election. Let me share something with you. I actually truly believe that because the Electoral Act is a new act, some of the you know teaching problems is going to be is going to come up when you implement. But the fact that there are some teaching problems there does not mean that you have to throw everything away with the bathwater. You are going to have to hem in your hate and your anger and your disappointment, and you're going to have to infuse courage and hope that the future will be brighter and better for this country. Do you see any form of credibility in the last election? I think for me there was something that was credible. The thing that was credible is that, for accreditation purposes, the beavers worked. What I consider most unfortunate is that it was the same INEC that chose to build the hope of Nigerians, the international community, politicians, young people, on some kind of magical process that is going to make people see results flying from their polling units straight to the server. They kept pumping courage into it and words into it and emotions into it until that was the significant thing that all Nigerians were waiting for. And how did they perform on that day? They bungled it. And because we are, we are a country where people do things that are no consequence, it's easy for them to shove it in our face, go to court. Look at what has happened in Ogun. In Ogun State, the margin of lead was 13,750. 
the council area that we can see only without even going for overvoting, we could we could quickly show them 33,750. A logical person will say, How can you cancel people are snatching ballots in 33,750? And some guy is telling me he won with 13,000, losing his own federal constituency, losing his state, losing his territorial district, losing his polling, losing his world, and you have handed him a certificate of return so that what we can go to court, go and start looking for money, look for lawyers, and then when we get to court. INEC, who is supposed to be independent, now begins to stand on the side of the people that they have announced. It's difficult for opposition. All right. Um, if there's one thing your party need to, uh, and you didn't, you've not mentioned the fact that, uh, and I just have about 60 seconds mm -hmm. to close to wrap up here, um, the issue of the SPVs, the allegation against your principal. Listen, I listened to that video many times by Achimogo, and I heard what Atiku is said to have said. But I don't see anywhere there where Atiku was saying, oh, the key created an SVB for himself. If at all that video is anything to, or that audio is anything to go by, Atiku was describing a scenario where the then president, Olisha Gwabasanjo, and his friends were advised to stop, not to put their hands directly in the till. And if they want, to, if they want Atiku to come and provide evidence in ICPC, for God's sake, I trust him, he'll be there. Because I know that that tape did not say, I, Atiku, did an SPB so that I Atiku can take the money and start eating the money. Atiku actually even went as far as saying that. Did you watch the not, tape? I watched it. Did you listen to it? I listened to it. And you, I, this is your position? No, no, this is the honest truth there. I've not even spoken to Atiku on the matter. Listen, the guy said, oh, this is what is SPB, and he was trying to break it down to teach him. Mm -hmm. And at some point in time, he described the scenario. And then he said, it wasn't there. They just told him, don't go and be doing this. Why don't you try this? And please. Countries have their culture. I hate hypocrites. Do not come and tell me that in 1999, you didn't think that political parties are funded somehow. And please do not come and pull the wool over my eyes and give the Nigerian people the impression that you are funded AD, AC, ACN, CPC, and even APC without some kind of arrangement and patronage. And if somebody has said something on tape, let's say the ICPC do whatever it needs to do. That's right. their business. But I can tell you, Atiku is not guilty. Shagun Shawumi, a member of the PDP, spokesperson of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council. Thanks so much indeed for coming today. It's a pleasure all the time, Shagun. I appreciate it. I appreciate it.